What's up, Epic7? Happy Mola Monday, and welcome to this week's Hall of Trials video. This week, we'll be tackling Xeno. Now, for the Dagger Sakaar reputation for Xeno, you need 8 million points. Now, that sounds like a lot, and it normally is, but the developers have thrown us a bone for once. This week, Dagger Sakaar is easy. In fact, if you don't have Dagger Sakaar for Xeno banged out, this is the week to do it. It's going to be a very simple team, so simple in fact that I'm going to give you two very stable Dagger Sakaar options that should blow the score right out of the window. And for those of you who already have Dagger Sakaar taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and give you a, um, a full auto team that doesn't really require changing any gear around and will let you complete this just by matching a button and walking away from your computer. But first, let's talk about the conditions the developers have given us this week for Xeno. So first, Thief Heroes suffer 30% decrease to attack and 30% decrease to evasion. So don't use Thief Heroes. Next, it's going to decrease the amount of healing received. So don't try to go too much sustain. We're just gonna burst them down. If the boss has attack down, you will do 50% more damage and Knights are given 50% boost to attack and 50% boost to defense, as well as some of, uh, effectiveness. It's like they're screaming, hey, use Abyssal Euphine, even though we didn't put her on the Mystic Summon. Ha ha. Well, you know what? Screw those guys. We're going to do this without Abyssal Euphine. We're going to use good old-fashioned Green Charles. Let's talk about the un other units first. Kitty Clarissa needs to be the fastest unit on your team. And the reason is she's got a cleanse and we need to get rid of debuffs at the start. I put her on her number one EE to help her heal Charles. And I gave her the Super Duper Water Shooter. As a damage boosting artifact, you can also put her on any debuffing artifact like Junkyard Dog, Cradle of Life, or Indestructible Gators to help with additional debuffs. Camilla, I put her on Card of Small Miracles, again to boost the attack so that Charles can do more damage. You could put her on Benny Mars Tachi or you know really any artifact at that point. You want her to be the second fastest unit. You could try running her on Rage Set, but I've been liking her on speed a little bit more uh, lately. Other than that, the stats really don't matter that much. Third unit on the team is Sinful Angelica. Now, I'm running my Wyvern Sinful Angelica because I needed her to be slower than Kitty Clarissa. She could be faster than Camilla. That really doesn't matter, but you definitely want her slower than Sinful Angelica, or than Kitty Clarissa. So even though she's only five star, she fits the bill. I've got her on Warhorn, again, because I'm just trying to boost Charles's damage, but you could easily run her on Prophet at Candlestick to help cycle her skills. It might actually be a safer option for her. Or you could run her on Celestine for healing, but I don't think healing is that important. You're just bursting damage down. None of her EEs really help in this. I've got her on her number three EE that boosts effectiveness, but she's got plenty of effectiveness already, so it's kind of a waste. Make sure her imprints are on, giving Camilla and Charles the bigger damage dealers the um, attack boost. And for Charles, best rage set I could cobble together. I mean, hey, we're going for Dagger Sakar. Put your Sunday clothes best on Charles and get him ready to do some damage. Uh, it's just one time on, one time off to re-gear him. I put him on the Cruel Mischief Artifact to maximize damage, and I have him on his number one EE that will give an additional 10% chance for Smash to go for Slash to go into Smash. So now we have a 35% chance to proc his S2 off of his S1 instead of only a 25% chance. He's only got 88% crit chance, but that's fine because Xeno is ice. The elemental damage gives us a plus 15% to crit chance, so she he is technically at 100% crit chance. He's got some effectiveness, but it doesn't really matter because in the break phase where his attack downs matter, Xeno has no effectiveness. Now there are a couple of hidden passes. At the start of the fight, Xeno does this crazy bullshit. I've, I've watched Doom way too many times, worm attack and puts restrict and buff block on your entire team. That's why you want Kitty to go first so she can S3 and remove all of that. But before she does that, I wanna show you these skills. Hidden in the verbiage of these skills, this middle one, Star's Armor, if you use a non-attack skill, grants increased defense and evasion to Xeno. And if he dodges outside of the break phase, he will self-cleanse everything and proc skill null for him and all the adds, which is a giant pain in the butt for maintaining a um, tempo in this fight. Secondly, and this is a big hidden one, if he is not wearing two or more debuffs, he has 30% damage mitigation. 
So you need two debuffs, or you're doing 30% less damage, even in the break phase. So that's why it's good to have secondary debuffers or a secondary debuffing artifact, not just attack down. So Kitty's gonna cleanse. I'm gonna use the S2 just to try to get a debuff up. And we got it. We got the uh, heal block on. I'll S2, I'm risking the evasion. We're up to evasion times two. We stuck the defense break and the attack down. We're into break, into the break phase. One debuff stayed behind. Sinful Angelica uses her S3. Now, I could easily have procced evasion, had to restart on those runs. In fact, I did like at least twice. Inside the break phase, he'll never proc evasion. Dual attack with Charles. Charles has a 60% chance to do attack down on his S1. So now we have two debuffs, one of which is attack down. We're doing maximum damage now. We got 7.2k 7 damage, or 720k damage. So let's see, let's look at this here. That's 4.7 on the, on the S1. Can I get a smash? 4.8 into 7.2. Holy crap, he is doing 1.2 million per attack if you can get slash and smash. So we're already at 4.7, 5.2, can I get a smash? Hey, we got a smash, and that is just shy of 6 million out of the first break phase. Remember, we only need 8 million for Dagger Sakaar, and we're already at 6. Perfect timing for Kitty to S3, get rid of all the debuffs. We've got the BS back of where he will have start stacking evasion up. The evasion stacking goes away when Zeno takes a turn, but every time you use a non-attack skill, his evasion goes up until he takes a turn. We're still good, but he still has the evasion. It could proc any time now. Nice. The attack down smash into slash. Really good damage. Dude, a third of his health bar in one hit. Oh, there it is. So the, the attack buff was too much, and it procs the evasion. It cleansed my attack down and kind of nerf the damage somewhat. Sinful Angelica also has attack down on her S1. And this pushes us into the break phase. Fan freaking task. Okay, so we just need a defense break and an attack down, and we got it both. So already we're at maximum score possible. Two debuffs, one of which is attack down. Remember, the defense break isn't what's helping us here. It's the fact that it's a second debuff. Zeno has zero defense in this phase, so the defense break in and of itself isn't helping. Other than that, it's two debuffs to get rid of the 30% mitigation. Okay, so there is one hit. And I forgot to transform Kitty. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh well, that wasted some hits. Into Smash, nice. We're at 10.5 million. You know what, if I transform now, he's... I'm not going to get any more hits in, so we'll just do the S1 so that Charles can get one more hit in before we exit the break phase. There we go. If I transformed Kitty, I wouldn't have got that last hit in. Plus, this will allow me to transform Kitty here and get rid of all the debuffs. 11.7 million, though, guys, and we only needed 8 million. Now, it's not the easiest thing in the world to clear at this point. In fact, Sinful Angelica is going to take a dirt nap, I think, as soon as Zeno takes a turn here. If he hits her, she's gone. Maybe he'll hit somebody else. Can I get an attack down? Nope. Can I get a smash at least? Okay, we got the smash. It'd be nice if that had been into an attack down. Yep, he hit Kitty. You know the pop damage would have, or hit Sinji. The pop damage would have killed her anyway. We'll attack buff Charles. Hopefully we don't evade. Ooh, attack down and defense break and smash. Holy smokes, look at that damage. I think we're going to clear. Okay, provoke. Provoke. Good lord. But you know, Kitty? Kitty isn't provoked. And that clears it at 12 million points. And we get the 1 million clear bonus for a clean 13 million points. A full 5 million above what we needed for Dagger Sakaar, which I hope impresses upon you just how low your gear can be and still pull off Dagger Sakaar this week. You don't need to be anywhere near as well geared as I was. I didn't proc Smash Slash into Smash too many times, and um, I still cleared it with 5 million uh, margin of error for the number one spot. That won't last long. People are going to come along and knock me out of there pretty fast. But I did say I wanted to show you a second team, and uh, this one is more of a meme team, but you can do it. And uh, it's especially good if you don't have Camilla or Kitty Clarissa, but you do happen to have Conqueror Lilius. So for the Conqueror Lilius team, on Conqueror Lilius, 
you need a debuffing artifact, either Cradle of Life, Junkyard Dog, or in my case, I'm going to use Indestructible Gators because my Indestructible Gators is um, plus 27, and that's a 95% chance to stick a burn. The important thing is that she supplies our second debuff to get rid of the mitigation because between her and Charles, we only have attack downs. So it's just my standard RTA Conqueror Lilius. There's nothing flashy or fancy about her. She doesn't need to be this fast. She doesn't need to be this bulky. All she needs is an artifact that gives debuffs like Cradle of Life, like Junkyard Dog, or if you have it, Indestructible Gators. Any of those will work fine. Next is Charles. It is the same Charles we ran on the prior team, but a quick overview is 85% crit chance plus elemental advantage is 100%. You want him on his number one EE so that you have a 35% chance to activate Smash instead of only 25. And you want him on Cruel Mischief for the extra damage boost from, you know, Cruel Mischief. That's it. Best rage set you got and you're ready to go. Now, what makes this team a little bit harder is you don't have a way to cleanse this BS at the start. You've just got to ride it out. So I'm going to try to waste some turns, buy some time. Once again, I'll go over this. Remember, if you use non-attack skills, it'll give Xeno stackable evasion. And if he evades, he procs skill and all and self-cleanses. And you need two debuffs or you do 30% less damage. That's why I put Gators on Conqueror Lilies. So I'm just using the S2. I'm mostly doing this to try to cycle the skills around so that I don't um, um, push into, into the break phase too quickly. And right there, we suffered from success, pushed into break phase immediately. So I'm just going to restart. i got to hold your mouth just right to make this work clean. So let's try this again. We're going to S2 just to waste some turns. We're trying to cycle Charles off of his buff block. Hey, we got the, the evasion, which proc the skill null on both Xeno and the add. That buys us a couple rounds. So we'll S2 Xeno here, doing no damage. Uh, we'll go ahead and S1 Xeno. Ooh, we got the attack down. No smash, though. Good. No smash, so we're still okay. We didn't push phase. I'll make you taste despair. Um... Can you even reach we'll just me? S2 here, Obey. push the evasion up a little bit, it. buying some time. We'll go ahead and hit the add here. It'll probably kill this add, but let's go ahead and hit it anyway. And now Charles gets to take a turn, as long as we don't do smash into that attack break. Okay, good. Perfect. All the debuffs are off. This took about four attempts to get this to line up perfectly where all the debuffs were off. but. I'll it worked. Now I got Vigor on, on Charles, and we push into the break phase. Now we just need two debuffs. There's the burn, and oh, we resisted. It actually said resisted. You know he has zero effect resistance inside the break phase. That resist was genuinely 15%, which everybody loves in PvE. But we got the attack down on Charles' second attack, so now we've got two debuffs, one of which is attack down. We're doing maximum damage now. Focus. Let's see how high we can push it. We just need these slashes to go into smashes, which didn't happen. Slash into smash. There it is. 35% chance of this proccing, so you'd want to expect that to happen one out of every three attacks. Really, if you're going for Dagger Sakaar, you just need to leave this phase at about three and a half to four million, and you are Gucci. We're already to four million. We've got a couple attacks left, 4.5, no smashes. I mean, one more, one more smash. There it is, 5.6, 5.6 million, which is pretty good. Xeno does his BS again. Now, normally we'd be in the waiting game to get rid of these debuffs, but you know what? I'm just going to try to burst us into the next phase as quickly as possible because we only need 5.8 million. We're going to get rid of these adds first because they can provoke at the wrong time, and it's a giant pain in the ass, so let's get rid of these guys so that they don't mess with everything. Now, can we get an attack down? There's an attack down into smash. No, no smash, unfortunate. Try it again. Attack down. Nice, into smash. There it is. Big damage. Hmm. It's time to draw my sword. Okay. Smash. Okay, attack down. Good. Into smash. No smash. Um, I'm not going to S3 yet. Okay, I think we are right up against it. So I'm going to go ahead and S3 here. If we get 
and a, a, a slash into smash, we should push phase. Oh no, we just push phase regardless. <laughs> All right, here we are in the break phase, and we've got vigor up. Uh, we did not get the attack down. I'll go ahead and use his S3 to attack buff up. As long as it's at the beginning of the fight, it's worth it. It still does decent damage. Now, come on. Burn and attack down. Ah, come on. Attack down. There it is. Okay, so we wasted like three hits, but we eventually got the attack down placed. Only a 60% chance for that attack down to proc, so it is what it is. Slash into smash. 4.6 million into 7.9 million. We're doing 1.2 million. Sorry, 460k into 720k. Math is hard, but we're basically doing 1.2 million per hit when Slash goes into Smash. Look how we have blown past the 8 million threshold. We're already up to 11.6 million. A cool 3.6 million above what we need for Dagger Sakaar. Unlike the first team, this one doesn't quite have the staying power. There's fewer units getting hit. There is zero healing whatsoever. So we do end the run at just 11.6 million, but still a very clean Dagger Sakar team. A little bit more RNG, a little bit harder to line everything up, but it still works. And it'll be great for people that have Lilius, but don't have Kitty and um, Camilla. Now you could use Fire Lilius, but you're going Fire into Ice, and you're going to suffer those evasions a lot. Now let's talk about a Triple S Plus team. So this team was given to me by PZPZ9140. In the comment section of my VOD, he whipped out this big brain comp. I did about three or four other comps that all pretty reliably gave Triple S Plus, but nothing was as reliable as this guy's big brain idea. So. For this team, we're going to use Laia. Laia is just our cleanser. You could use Fire Lilius in place of Laia as your cleanser. You'll have to deal with the evasion BS a little bit more often because of Fire into Ice, whereas Laia is a little more stable. Laia doesn't do any damage other than her dual attack. I just got a normal RTA build Laia. She doesn't need to be built this well. She just needs to exist. I'm going to run Lilka. This is the same Lilka that we use on Ice Expeditions. She's got um, Song of Stars on for target for additional damage. If you don't have Lilka, you could run Summer Break Charlotte. She works just fine. We're going to run Breeg. Breeg is here for uh, defense breaks, barriers, and slow debuff. He is basically our source of additional debuffs to get the extra damage. Now, if you want to make your Breeg better, you can put Wings of Light and Shadow on him. This will increase your damage. It also gives that 15% crit chance, which get which would get my Breeg to 100% crit. But I know if I do that, I'll forget to put it back on and break an expedition later. So I'm going to leave him on Sword of Azera for expeditions. Now, Charles, I could have left my Rage Set Charles up, but I wanted this team to be incredibly relatable. So I literally just used the in-game Fribbles and said, put a counter set on. I maxed out crit damage and attack and min mend everything else. I, I put one into crit chance and this build dropped into my lap and this is all you need, right? 85% plus crit chance, make sure he's on his number one EE so you've got that 35% chance to slash into smash. Put him on Cruel Mischief Artifact, but this is about as uh, low end of a gear holding Charles as I think there can be. Build a better Charles, this is even more stable. Fire this team up, press auto, and just make sure Charles' skills are off if you're running Lilka. If you're not running Lilka, you might want to leave Charles' skills on so he can self-attack buff. But with Lilka, Lilka gives him the attack buff. The S1s, there's the attack break into his smash, and we have already almost pushed phase. Breeg, as long as he doesn't get evaded, and he doesn't, this should push us right into the break phase before we've even really taken a hit. There's the dual attack. I'll focus on one of And there's the target. Right We've got here. attack down from Charles, so now we are doing pretty good damage. There's 1.3 million. Our goal for triple S plus is 4.5 million. What I like about this is Lia takes really good gear for RTA, but here. And this is probably the first time you go hear this. You only really need gear on Lyle. I mean, just enough to keep her alive. She only just needs to exist so that she can cleanse the debuffs. Right there's the debuffs. Lyle takes a turn, uses her skill. D 
debuff's gone. That's really her entire jam for this. The dual attacks are nice, but she doesn't do much damage otherwise. I have no mercy to Sprig applies a defense break. Hopefully. Hopefully. There we go. And the slow. So we actually have two debuffs, so we're doing max damage. Hey, with target and attack down, you know we're doing good damage now. Look, a CR pushing Charles all over the place. Wyatt throws a guitar, which here doesn't do that much damage because it's just fixed damage. And now we're into the second break phase. We have barely taken any damage at all. We're entering the break phase at 2.6 million. So we just need another 2 million in this break phase. We don't have the attack down, so hopefully Charles gives us that attack down. And we don't get it. 60% chance. Come on, Charles. Got one more shot here. Show me that attack down. Once Breeg gets done playing the animation. Any day now, Breeg. Wyatt's got to do her thing, too. And we didn't get the attack down, so wow, we are doing really, really low damage. We finally get the attack down with one hit left on the board, and it's from Laia, who does almost no damage. So this was an incredibly low scoring round. In fact, I can't conceive of a way that that round could have scored lower on damage, and we're still at 4.1 million. I think you would easily have been at 5 million by now if Charles had gotten one of those attack rates early on instead of missing three coin flips in a row. But now we're at 4.2 million. Breeg puts shields on, on every well, not on everybody. We got buff block, I guess. And the arrogance of a But we've got target, we've got attack down, we've got defense break. And we've got Charles ready to take a turn. No, Lilka! You monsters. Bam! Can we get a smash? No. Man, if we got a smash, that would have been over. 4.389. There's the car. Wow, he, he actually has 1,300 health left. <laughs> Living with just a sliver of health. We got provokes and provoke. Well, she'll cleanse the provoke. Oh, Charles gets the last hit in. Spam. 4.4 million plus the 1 million clear bonus. Easy 5 million. So this is a pretty safe and stable team. If you don't have Charles, you could probably run Landy. Is ML Landy, that is. You could definitely run Abyssal Euphine, though you would probably want to change their gear up. Maybe put them on a Rage set or something. But Charles makes this really, really easy to do a triple S+. Plus. Just the way his kit is put together. Fantastic unit for clean, easy clears. I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope this gets your Xeno Dagger Sakara reputation mission out of the way so you never have to mess with that again. I hope you guys will hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and comment in the comment section to show your appreciation as much as I appreciate you guys. Have a great rest of your week.